this rabbit start footage in just because this one particular rabbit was actually a pretty nice looking one. We can see everybody's getting a very smooth rounding behind the rabbit and we're all spaced well between a boat length and boat length and a half apart. And so this gives everybody the same even chance of doing well in the drill as we start out. We know that if we if you miss the rabbit by a little bit, then you're you're kind of already at a disadvantage in the drill. You're not getting as much out of it. And it means that everybody else isn't getting as much out of it as well because we're just one more boat down. Uh, so we know the point of our uh, wind sprints that we're doing here. We're simulating the first 30 seconds to a minute off that starting line. And so we have kind of two thoughts in mind as we go through this. One is we want to make sure that we don't fall down into the boat to leeward of us. Uh, so we need to have a high mode. And the other is we want to make sure that the boats above us to windward of us don't drive over top of us. And so we need to have a low mode. And those two uh, those two modes are, are not very far apart. There are a few degrees, you know, where the high mode is maybe where we're pulling our jib, strapping our jib in just a little bit more, just another degree or two higher. Uh, and the low mode is maybe we're just easing that jib a little bit. Uh, and it almost doesn't look visibly any different. That's just how much, uh, how, how tight we're pulling those sails at the, at the very end. Um, but it, it does allow us to have a very big effect on what our boat's actually doing. So if we feel we're falling down into the boat to leeward of us, we go to high mode. If we feel like the boat to windward of us is, is gaining on us, is starting to roll over, we'll go into the little bit of low mode. And so there's room for a lot of variability as we sit in our lane here. There's room for a lot of variability up and down by a, a few degrees in order to keep our lane and stay up in the top of that fleet. So for example, looking here, we have Audrey McKenna, Johnny and Sterling, uh, and Johnny has a pretty big hole down to leeward of him. He's not worried so much about pointing. Audrey is. So if we look at the difference here, we can just kind of see it. The uh, camera boat is right behind, uh, right behind Audrey, and we can see they're they're going straight away from the camera. Uh, Johnny and Sterling, or Johnny and Daniel, rather, are uh, are are down a few degrees more. You can we can kind of see the angle difference there, um, pointing away from the wind a little bit just a little bit more. And so they're just focused on their boat speed right now. They're sailing close hauled. Audrey McKenna are just working on pointing up as high as they can uh, and, and making sure they don't slowly drift down into the back draft off Johnny's main. We know that the bad air effect, the, the disturbed wind kind of comes out like this following my cursor. So it's not just directly downwind. So once our boat falls down into this section, we're going to slowly drop back into the worse and worse bad air. Just keep an eye on the relative placement of all these boats as we do have Johnny is uh, Johnny is kind of in a tight spot here because he doesn't want to point too high or Sterling's going to be able to drive over top. Of him. But if he points too low, Audrey is we can kind of see this is happening in real time. Audrey's pulling in front of him and he is getting that backdraft off of Audrey's sail. And just between the small combined effect of a little bit, little bit of uh, bad air from Sterling, a little bit of backdraft from Audrey McKenna, we've been able to watch Johnny just slowly drift down here. Uh, and, and, you know, from the start, he looked okay. He was sitting there, but just both of them were just barely able to reach out and touch him, and he is no longer in the top of the fleet there. And, uh, yeah, not, not sure what's up with those.